out. Welcome back, Dukes and Duquettes, and welcome back to YouTube. It's Eddie TV. I'm Eddie Ed, back with another video. I'm doing a reaction to a video titled Getting Lost at Camp. Getting Lost at Camp Geronimo. <clears throat> okay, that sounds familiar. That sounds like a movie or something. Don't that sound like a movie to you guys? Camp Geronimo? Camp Geronimo? That sounds like a movie. I don't know. But before we hop straight into the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, drop in the comments what other video you'd like me to react to next with the link. <clears throat> make sure you attach the link with it so I can get straight to it. And also, if you haven't already, go to Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, the new page, at TV. So, uh, you know, let's keep rocking over there. I'm going to be doing, like, other activities with you guys over there. You guys could DM me, all that good stuff. And, yeah, if you like gaming, go to 88 Gaming. That's why I do all the live streams. And yeah, let's get it popping over there too. So without further ado, let's hop straight into the video at EA TV. Lord of the Flies, you're probably going to have to in school one day. Let me give you an abridged version for when that time eventually comes. The Lord of the Flies is a book about a bunch of little British boys who got marooned on a deserted island. That was a savage a movie. story about what the boys do to survive the elements, but also themselves. With yeah. like a week on the island, the boys devolve into complete savages, covering themselves in face paint and killing a pig. Savages. I said too much. And when I read the book in high school, I thought having the boys turn savage so quickly wasn't all that accurate. As a former young boy myself, I was insulted that William Golding thought that us little boys were so heartless. But then I remembered all the things that happened at my scout camp, Camp Geronimo, and I realized that Lord of the Flies is still inaccurate. The boys would have gone savage way faster. Listen. I'm a cautious person when I'm hanging around the guys. In PE, the other boys would be playing this game called Quarters, where you would fling quarters at people's knuckles until they bled. But I wouldn't play Oh, gosh. You know, we played, we played bloody knuckles. We didn't play no fling quarters to your uh, knuckles until they bled. <clears throat> play bloody knuckles. That's when you uh, take each other's knuckles. You know, one, one guy gets their good hand, the other guy gets their good hand, and you, and you punch each other in the knuckles. Whoever can't, can't handle the pain is going to tap out. Or you're going to to the knuck to your knuckles get bloody, and if you want to keep on going and send it to the next level like a super saiyan, you keep on going savagely. But this one, this is different. I never heard of this one. I'm a loser. Or when I was at a party and someone wanted to play the knife game to show off how good their hand-eye coordination was. See, no see, I don't even mess with that game either. That's too risky. That's too dangerous. Bloody knuckles I could do, but this one, you trying to you you trying to sever your finger. What sense does that make? It's not going to be on your hand no more. Now you got to attach it, and, and if your finger survived, it's going to work. But if it didn't, what kind? See, so, yeah, you would never catch me playing this game. Unless it's like a plastic knife. Even with a plastic knife, it's still going to hurt if you stab yourself. But at least you might have your finger still. Uh, but, yeah, you won't catch me with a real knife at, at all. With a real knife, not me. I came either because I needed my hands to draw. But something about being with... The guys. In the middle of the woods, I would live on the edge. Every summer, our troops stayed at this camp called Camp Geronimo, named after the Apache Indian who was the first person to yell Geronimo while doing a sick backflip into his pool. One time, me and a couple other boys, I don't remember who started it, but we were playing with matches, and okay, okay. I know what you're thinking, but nothing bad happened, okay? We just oh, accidentally as in they smoking or something? Bushes on fire and it got somewhat out of control. Are but you it's crazy? Okay, it's fine, okay? told the scoutmaster that there was a loose fire spreading faster than we could put it out and he got everyone in the troop to stomp on it and we never got in trouble well, what were we doing with the matches oh we were just lighting them and throwing them at each other anyway about 30 other scout troops attended camp geronimo and we would spend a whole week sleeping in tents and earning merit badges most of the camp honestly felt like school, but outside. Like, when you got to the camp, you were given a schedule of classes, and for the next seven days, you would go to those classes and learn and fill out packets and sometimes even have homework, which probably... So what's the point of the camp, then? I mean, sure, the classes weren't as boring as English or geometry. Geronimo's classes were Bro, wilderness survival. how are you gonna go to a camp and do schoolwork? Yeah, that's basically... That's no... So you go outside just to do work. I, you might as well stay inside. What the heck is... Or bare self-defense. Earning a merit badge requires... Bare self-defense? The first thing, you had to write stuff down. Name and point out the major parts of a kayak. Kayak. Explain to your counselor the hazards you're most likely to encounter while participating in kayaking activities. Bears. And the second part of the merit badge, you had to actually go out and do stuff. 
capsize the kayak, swim it and the paddle to the shore, and if you don't make what? it, the bears will get you. I never got the kayaking air badge. You had to be at least 12 to go to Geronimo, but you could go as an 11-year-old if a parent was coming with you. And at the time, my dad was a camp counselor. My birthday was May 14th, and Geronimo was at the end of May, so I barely made the cutoff as the youngest... So, like, in other words, if you're 11, it's, it's unacceptable to almost get attacked by a bear. When you're 12, you're qualified. Okay. Going. Geronimo was a big step from spending three days at Cub Scout Day Camp to spending a week in the wilderness. What made it worse was I was going to be spending a whole week with all the mean older scouts and my dad. There was this one scout named Paul. When I was 11, he was 15. So naturally, he would pick on me and make fun of me. Ha ha, I get it. I'm small, so I suck. But silver lining, he got fatter. And a couple years ago, he reached out to me, and I had been doing the whole YouTube thing for a while. He was off starting his own business, and he wanted to do some business opportunity with me. And I just said, hey, do you want to do my merch? So now he works for me. So kids, if you oh, ever have bullies, shoot. just become successful on YouTube, he bossed up, son. Plushies. He's actually a really good merch guy. He gets all my stuff into these retail stores. So if you see a floof plushie at Hot Topic, you can say, thanks, Paul. Bullies really do make a difference. Anyway, self-promotion. Wow. The first year at Geronimo, <laughs> was a little bit on the very young side compared to everyone else. That I was funny. I was a class called Orienteering. The class taught us how to read maps and use a compass. And one day, it was time for our class to go on a scavenger hunt thing. We were given a list of places we had to go to, and we were supposed to use our compass and count our paces to get to each specific location. Then when we got to our destination, there would be a marker somewhere, and we would have to write down what that marker was. There were ten different markers that we had to find, and the course was supposed to lead us in a circle. The leader who was in charge of our group and the compass was an older scout named... Paul. It wasn't the merch guy Paul, but I think it would be funnier if it was. Our group set off to the first location. Having a compass and counting your steps isn't the most accurate way of navigation, but we weren't allowed to use Google Maps, so... When we got to the spot, we had to look around for a little bit to find the marker, but we eventually found it, and then we were off to the second location. This time, the marker was harder to find. The spot we landed on was pretty far from where the marker actually was. At the third location, we couldn't find the marker. But we did see this reflective sign on a tree, and we figured that's what the marker was supposed to be, so we wrote it down. At this point, I decided to grab my own compass and give it a try. My compass pointed in a direction that was a little bit off from Paul's direction. Not by a whole lot, but just enough. But remember, I was the little kid. Nothing I said mattered. Paul said things to me like, Oh, you don't know how to use a compass. I bet yours is broken. I'm never going to work for you one day. And you know what? I believed him. Nah, he, uh, he probably had 15 years old. Do you know how wise and experienced he is? So I think he added that in there just to make his uh, point that he worked for him now. Found as a marker. So <coughs> it's trash, it's a marker. Hey, this or it could have been true. An M carved into a heart. Kind of weird that it's at an all boys camp. Do you think that it's a marker? Eventually, we all had to admit that we were completely lost. The other boys told Paul to hand over his compass, and Paul reached into his pocket, pulled out his compass, and two buzz magnets. Buzz magnets are magnets that are shaped like a bullet and you can throw them up in the air and they make this cool buzzing sound. They sold them at the camp store, so that's why Paul had them. And everyone immediately figured out why we were lost. For those of you who don't know how compasses and magnets work, I don't know either. I think it has something to do with them coming from outer space. A compass is supposed to point to the magnetic north pole and a magnet will mess up the direction a compass is supposed to point in. Paul's compass wasn't pointing to his pants the whole time. We would have been suspicious if that had happened. But because his compass was right next to a magnet, it got uncalibrated. And then we all got lost in the woods and died. Man! That's why I don't have an orienteering merit badge. I was upset because my compass probably wasn't broken, but I didn't stand up for myself. Because I don't do that. I have more Camp Geronimo stories, like the time me and my friend threw a Ziploc bag full of water at the older kids lean to, and then I ran away so fast that I threw up. But I already did a video about that, and it's five years old. And it's very bad, and you're not allowed to watch it. So the moral Why is he a marshmallow? Just because you're young and they're doesn't humans. doesn't mean you're stupid. But it does mean you make bad videos on YouTube. Also, check your pockets before going orienteering. Going orienteering. Sounds like a tongue twister. Going orienteering. Alright, we're gonna end it right here, guys. <clears throat> this is it. Man, like, come on. I think he added that in there talking about he, he worked for him to kind of like one up him or or like say like yeah, look now. Which is kinda understandable, but 
Damn, you you had to do the dude like that. I mean, he isn't it enough that you know that he works for you? I guess he wanted to uh, let everybody else know as well. Uh, but now, like the dude that worked for him, if you see the video, pretty pretty sure you already saw the video. Is he gonna still be working for you?